Hey everybody, it's B Run. I'm back for more tagging stream stuff with some uh, neat little new goodies. I updated the little uh, format here a little bit, made a border for around some stuff. Actually, it's not a border, it's um, basically a background. So, boop. Boop. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Neat. <clears throat> Let's see. <clears throat> and uh, got some new lights. Got some new lights and a slightly better working camera. So hopefully we've got some better quality imagery going here. And... Uh, I did some prep work, so I'm not going to be sitting here asking myself a lot of questions that I don't know the answer to. I found out all the answers to my questions early, so. All right. So how are you guys today? How have you guys been the last week or so? What did you guys end up doing last week? Anything? Or did it just go unfilled? Was there a void in your heart from me not being able to stream? <clears throat> Who is on so far? Who is on so far? Why is this not working? It says I'm not streaming, but I don't see you guys. Well. Okay. So I probably just need to refresh the page. <coughs> Did not show up on me. Let me see if I see me. I have to see me. I'm not narcissistic. I just need to know that the stream is working. Come on. Come on, me. Come on, me. Here, let's get meta for a second. I'm not okay. narcissistic. I, I just see need me to now. know the stream is working. I see me now. Come on. Alright, come on. Put that me. back. Come on, me. Here, let's get back. Alright. I'm not okay. narcissistic. I, I just see need to know the stream is working. Alright, so this is the stuff that we're working on today. Come on. We're going to be starting uh, right, some prep work for um, a boss battle. Or Primal Ifrit, which is from Final Fantasy XIV, and they recently um, added him as a boss in so Final Fantasy Record Keeper, which gave today. me a really nice sprite to work with. To be starting, so, uh, some prep work for, um, for those of you who have been on the site for a while, you might remember uh, a few years back I made a boss fight for um, Titan Extreme from Final Fantasy XIV, and that's when I made the Monster AI upgrade patch, which does quite a few different things. And a few years back, I made. You got a bad echo, huh? Um, um, Titan Extreme. From I'm Fantasy surprised. 14, which gave... Aha. Because Twitch was not muted and it was supposed to be. So even if I can't hear it, you guys could hear it. Sorry about that. Normally I catch that kind of thing. All right. There we go. <clears throat> fixed, right? Well, when it catches up, fixed. Okay. Yes, muted, muted, good. All right. So we're going to be doing this stuff. And if no one has any questions, we're just going to jump into it. So I did a bunch of pre-work for this stuff, and um, went ahead. This is a fresh copy of the ROM. I always keep a folder for unmodified copies of the ROM so that I can copy that into other things when I do all my various patches and edits and things of that nature. Um, and I set up some save stuff so that I can get to the boss quickly, but we're not going to worry about that right now. 
What I'm going to have him replace, let's take a look at him. This is him here. This is the sprite rip um, off of Spriter's Resource from Final Fantasy Record Keeper for the Primal Ifrit. So this is Ifrit here, and this is what's called an Infernal Nail, which is a mandatory add that you have to take out before you continue the fight. So we're going to be working in those mechanics. And um, so it's going to be a mixture of... Um, actually, it's primarily based off of the Primal Fight from Final Fantasy XIV. And I'm going to be adapting it for Final Fantasy VI. Really, the, the main thing I'm getting from Final Fantasy Record Keeper is just the sprite. Because the sprite... I mean, because uh, Record Keeper was trying to emulate Final Fantasy XIV. But... Um, but they obviously had to work around their own mechanics, and I'm going to be doing the same thing with Final Fantasy 16. So I'm not going to imitate FFRK's um, Primal Effort Battle. I'm going to be going directly to the original source. But this is a really good looking sprite. Uh, we're going to end up distorting it a little bit. We can get it to fit actually very nearly perfectly in um, the max size sprite, which is 128 by 128. But we're actually going to shrink it down, and we're going to be using um, we're going to be using 96 by 64. And so we're going to uh, squish them just a little bit. It still looks good, and the reason we're doing that is because we need the extra space in the SRAM for infernal nails. And we're going to have I haven't decided how many we're going to have in the end, but. Um, likely upwards four. And in order to do that, we get to create a custom mold, which, if you guys don't know what that is, that is uh, how the game interprets the data in the um, in the, the VRAM, I'm sorry, not SRAM, VRAM, how it interprets the sprite data that's loaded up, because there's only so much space can be loaded into the game, because it has limited sprite space. So, um, so that's going to be fun. I did a bunch of research on that today and tested it all out, and it looks really good. <coughs> so we're going to go through that process today here. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go grab, we're going to grab some things. So I already have that. Let's quickly go over the AI upgrade patch so you guys can see the kind of stuff that we're going to be working with. Um, we have the ability to go above 65,000 HP, which we will probably end up doing. Um, I did say this is not going to be like a super boss battle, but it's going to have more than 65,000 HP because that's really easy to go through. Um, some ignore defense, some ability to ignore defense, which comes in handy because we want defense to not be overpowered, and you can cap things like your defense, and I don't think you can cap your magic defense, but you can get pretty close. So I like the idea of a partial, um, a partial ignore. And I need to turn my phone off. Um, give me one second. All right. <coughs> Give everyone a chance to refresh the screen. Everyone refresh the page. Get everyone up on here. I apologize for any problems that that caused. I tried to, what I tried to do was Every time my stream gets archived by Twitch, it archives the whole thing. And since I start the stream early with the countdown, it always has like the first like 45 minutes that's just like a countdown. And so what I wanted to do is not have that. So I stopped the stream and restarted it with only like two minutes left. But what happened was nobody else could get back into this. Nobody like the stream didn't pop back up automatically for people. So. So yeah, refresh your page, everything will be fine. Good? We good? Hope we're good. All 
Thanks, Mog. I did uh <coughs> did a bit of work trying to get that up. Um, yeah, I've got to, I have some some neat ideas for it. Uh, I basically threw that together today pretty quickly, um, but hopefully I'll get some a little bit more polished soon. All right, so anyway, back to the Monster AI upgrade patch. Um, so for the scripting, we've got a few bonus things. We have target front row, which I think we're going to use for Ifrit. Um, he's going to have a knockback mechanic, so he's going to hit the front row back into the back row. And then target highest HP, lowest HP, target none. That's not very useful most of the time. I actually made it so I could get the, uh, the little box to pop up with the ability name and then have him not cast it. But that was from Titan because I needed because he had a rotation. And so I needed to indicate that the that the spell had gone off, but no one was in place to get hit by it. So target none seems completely pointless, but it had a use, which is why I made it. Change music and date, change background are going to make a return because they're a lot of fun. And I'm going to enlist uh, probably Gein Attack to help me with the music because even though I do have a little bit of uh, experience doing music hacking and setting up, I am nowhere near um, as talented as, uh, as Gein Attack is. And um, I've already picked out a couple songs, but... I may be taking submissions for that if anyone is interested and thinks they have some some good ideas for songs. But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. All right, so change music, change background. Um, Fanatics, we don't have to worry about. That was another thing for Titan EX because he was in Fanatics Tower. Uh, check status. We are going to be using this because Ifrit is a fire-heavy boss. And we don't want to break it by having by absorbing fire. And so I don't want to make a hard counter where he just blows everyone up. But I am going to make a kind of soft counter to it where it will be discouraged or he will um, alter his moves based on if there is a resistance or um, if someone absorbs fire. So in uh, vanilla, you cannot check for that. So... The monsters have no idea if what they're doing at you hurts you or not. So we're going to take advantage of that. Um, we can check for the higher HP bite, uh, quick detect, and script branching, all just little things. We can we can also use... Um, so yeah, that's the stuff that's in the patch. There's a link in here if anyone is following along and wants to try out some of this stuff. What's up, Chrono? Um, yep. All right, so that's the that's the upgrade patch. Uh, what you need in order to apply that is Lunar IPS. Lunar IPS, this is, uh, this is a patching utility. It's very simple, very straightforward, super easy to use. You actually just need to have this on your computer, and um, then your patches will do their thing quickly and automatically. In fact, I'll show you right now. I'll show you right now. So once you have um, Lunar IPS, then all of the patches that you make are .ips, and they automatically do this. You don't even have to run a program. You just literally open up the patch, double click on it, and it pops up. And you pick the ROM you want to use, and this is just a clean. This is a clean Final Fantasy uh, six ha uh, Final Fantasy six ROM that I just renamed to Primal Ifrit because reasons. And ta-da! The file was successfully patched, and that's it. That's all you need to do. Okay, so that's easy. Anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. All right, what's next on the agenda? Monster sprites. Monster sprites. All right, so for importing monster sprites, we're going to be using a utility. Let me, oops. Let me bring up my editors here. Sprite editor. And primal effort. It's not appear to be, oh, that's right. I need to use a headered ROM for that. 
see and I tried to I tried to since we're gonna do just a very small amount of hex work tonight I tried to make it simpler on people by not having to work with the header so that the addresses made more sense but that didn't work so what I'm gonna do is actually instead of adding a header I'm just gonna go grab my header unmodified so unmodified Final Fantasy 3 ROM with a header. ROM life for it based. I'm gonna delete that. Oh, not to mention I probably just screwed it up because the patch goes for a headered ROM also. See, I'm already making mistakes. Uh, primal life for it. There. All right. So I patched the headered ROM. Please patch with please patch your headered ROM for this patch. It needs to be headered. And now we will go back to the editor. Ta-da! Alright. So what we're gonna be replacing. Now the the monster we're putting it on and the sprite we are, are replacing are two different things. So this has all of the monster IDs for every monster, and the images get reused. So this is the monster, and then this is the actual sprite. This is the actual sprite that gets used. So you can actually change the loaded sprite for any monster. And so what we're going to be replacing the monster we are replacing is going to be Katana Soul in the um, Ancient Castle. Do, 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 do. Somewhere over the rainbow. Katana Soul, you. Except the sprite you're going to be using and the sprite we're going to be replacing is. Uh, I'm going to use hit on. Who's down here somewhere? Actually, it's going to be really far down here. Hit on. Okay, and I can keep this palette. Doesn't really matter. Oh wait, and I can't import just yet. But this is the uh, this is the editor we're using because I need to set up the actual. I need to set up the actual sprite we're going to use. All right. So then the editor we're going to be using to set up the sprite is GIMP. You can also do this with Photoshop. Um, GIMP is basically the free Photoshop. But the link is in the uh, hacking stream thread. And get yourself GIMP. You don't necessarily have to use GIMP, but that's what I use. So that's what you're going to see on the screen. All right. Primal effort, edit with GIMP. All right. This is it here, and we've got to get it down to size. Got to get it down to size. All right, so like I said before, I need my toolbox. Here we go. All right, so like I said before, what we need to do is we're going to um, we're going to grab his outline. We're going to just get it on pixel, on pixel to the very edge. So you can see this is the very last pixel to the right. Let me pull this off to the side. In fact, I'm going to take it off screen. For now, last pixel to the left is his toe. Last pixel on the top is the little horn thing. And last pixel on the bottom is the very tip of his finger here. All right, so we've got all that. And image, crop to selection. Crop to selection. All right, and so you can see up in the, um, up in the bar at the top, and actually, I don't know if you guys can see that on the stream. So I'm going to pull it down just a little bit. 
that this is still 136 by 97. 136 by 97. So that's too big. Um, even if we were using our max size, we would need to cut a little bit out. <coughs> now what we're actually going to do is the first thing we're going to fix is the left to right. Um, we're going to end up chopping a little bit off the horn, and we're going to end up moving this arm up by, I think, only one pixel um, to make space in the long run. But for now, we're going to um, scale the image. And this is not the best way to do this, but this is uh, the easiest way to do this, and it works in a lot of situations. So you'll see we're going to lose a little bit of detail. Um, someone who actually works with sprites... Like you can, you can tell scrolling this in and out that this is, you can tell exactly what you're looking at. You know, it's very clean, very crisp. And an actual spriter would be able to do a better job of this than what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale the image and make sure this is linked here because that'll scale both dimensions. We're taking this down to 96. Okay, 96. And we'll talk about why a little bit later when we get to the molds. We're taking this down to 96, and 68 there is still going to be a little bit too big. It needs to be 96 by 64, but we're going to do 96. And so you see we lose a bit of detail, but it still looks like him. It's still him, especially when you zoom it out a bit. It's, it's hard to tell the difference, and that's more like what it's going to look like on the stream. Okay, and then the other thing we need to pay attention to... Um, like I said, we need to cut four more pixels off the height to get down to uh, our target 64. And so we're going to take this guy here. We're going to take his claw here, and we're going to control X to cut, control V to paste. And we're just going to drag it up one, drag it up one pixel. One pixel. And then the other three pixels are actually going to come off of... Um, the other three pixels are going to come off the horn here. So one, two, three. All right, and you should be able to see down in the bottom, and I'm going to pull this up, so hopefully you can see that. Actually, I'm going to do it this way. When you're dragging your... Uh, when you're dragging your corners around to set your selection size, you can see down in the bottom corner, it says rectangle 96 by 64. So when you move this around, you see that num those numbers change. And so you want to get that to exactly 64. Okay, so that's, that's, how, that's how I figured out what my size needed to be. Okay, so we're chopping a little bit off the horn, but eh, it's not a big deal. Not a big deal. And we move the hand up one pixel, which is not going to make him look weird at all. Okay, and so now we're going to do the same thing. So now we're in our target size in the selection and image, crop to selection, and there he is. All right, now there's one more step. There's one more step. Uh, we can't have any transparencies. Final Fantasy VI will make its own transparency out of the first color in the palette. So if we are on the image menu, and we go to mode. Oh, shoot. This was supposed to be indexed. This is going to screw up all the colors. All right, so I'm going to go back, and you're, you are going to see why. You're going to see why. Um, so these modes, RGB is basically any color anywhere. Um, indexed is what we're working with, and that creates a palette for us because the Super Nintendo works with palettes. And so what we're going to have is we're going to have maximum of 16 colors, and that's going to look kind of funky. Yeah, that, that looks... That's not actually terrible. That's actually not terrible. Um, that's actually not terrible. But I'm going to go back anyway, because it was made for a certain pixelage, and we're messing with that, because there's one more step we have to do also.
So I'm actually going to control Z a bunch of times. We get to do this again. Yay! All the way up to here. Yeah, we're at, so we're still at full size here, so all the pixels are still in the proper place. We're going to do... We're going to do that part now. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our bucket tool, our fill tool, and we need to fill it with a very noticeable color. All of this transparency needs to get filled up. Okay, and this blue here is going to be what um, Final Fantasy thinks is transparent when we load it up. Okay, so we're filling all of these empty spaces here. Get this out of the way. Okay, I think I got all of it. Nope. Bing. All right, nothing else look checkery. Nothing else look checkery. And you can scroll in and out like this by holding control down and then using your mouse wheel. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh, see? See, there's still one there. And that was going to mess us up if that stayed in when we, um, after we resized. All right, so now that we've got this, we're going to go back to image, mode, indexed, and 16 colors. So converts, and you see nothing changed here because this is already set up for uh, actually less than 16 colors. Um, and we can look at that by going into our Windows, Dockable Dialogs, and Color Map. That's our palette. You see that over here? And what we need is we need the blue in the first slot because whatever whatever color is in the first slot, lean the camera down. Boop. Okay. Whatever color is in the first slot is what the game's going to think is transparent. Okay, and so we can go into the color map menu and rearrange the colors. And... Just going to drag that blue all the way over there. All right. Fixed, 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 fixed. Okay. All right. So now we got to go back and do all that stuff that we were doing before. So, oh, look at that. I even missed one. I even missed one. Bing. Okay. All right. So we're going to grab the hand. Actually, we're going to grab the... Crap right about there ish. XV and bink. I don't think I want two pixels. I think one pixel is enough. Wait, did I rescale this yet? You know what? I think I need to resize it first. I need to resize it first. Did I already do that? No, I didn't. So image, scale image. Let's go back to this, 96. Bing. There we go. So yeah, you can see it looks kind of distorted. Hmm. Hmm. I'm wondering if scaling first and then changing the palette might look better in the long run. Did that other one look better? This so that allows us to have more colors. All right. Let's find out. All you got to do is switch it back to RGB and scale again. Scale image. 96. Now it creates these weird shadows on here. Oops. And now do indexed 17. Uh, what that does leave us with are these weird colors, though, here. And those are bad. We don't want those colors. Because those will show up just like this. And this color will still be transparent. And so he's going to look like he's got a little bunch of weird blue outlines on him. Even though a lot of that does technically look a little bit better. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? When I do this process without talking, I can actually do it a little bit more quickly.
Okay, so I just went back to here. Image, scale image, 96, scale. And then if I do this, um, now I'm going to change it to indexed with 15. So this is just an idea I'm having here. That way I still have one color I can put in here, but I'm not dealing with the... Um, That looks a little bit better actually. And so now that I've scaled it, I've used up 15 colors instead of like the 13 or whatever that it came with. Now I can actually change it back to red, green, blue, RGB. And now I can do this part for the 16th color without having to worry about those weird half blue colors. Okay, good. Anywhere else? Anywhere else? Oh yeah, that looks way better. Alright, and then last step, indexed for 16. Da, 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 color map. Um, rearrange and whoop. Okay, I like this better. I like this better. I don't think those are supposed to look connected. I might fix that. That looks a little bit funny. Is that just me? What do you mean? I uh, what do you mean? I don't need to match him to a palette later. Oh, I need to hide this preview. I don't want that. Oops. There you go, clicking on things. Yeah. I think the hot chick in the front row is right. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yes, so um, every monster has a unique palette. There's no reused palettes between monsters. So when you import, it automatically does that part for you for the monster you are currently on. Okay, every monster unique palette. You never have to worry about screwing up palettes. All right, all right, so last thing we gotta do now is we gotta fix the uh, the up and down size. Up and down, this is what the, that's the technical term for it. Um, I need to fix this. Actually, we already have a we get we already got one pixel out of that just from doing the process the way we did it. Hmm. So where are we at if I get up to sixty four here? Um, I should probably get at least one more there though. Okay. All right. So I'm still gonna pick this up by one. X V and up. And now, and now 64 lands right there. Image, crop to selection. Okay. There we go. Not quite as clean as the original, but we're going to have the added benefit of being able to add a bunch of infernal nails to the fight, which are kind of imperative. All right. And last step is to export. And we're going to call it primal ifrit.ping. And yes, it does need to be um, a ping file. I think. That's what I use. I think it has to be a ping. Because uh, pings are the only ones that have palettes. You can't use like a JPEG or something like that. 
and all the default stuff works just fine. So, just to recap, 96 by 64, 16 colors indexed or with a palette, and the first color in the palette becomes transparent. So all that to say. And I don't need to worry about that because that's the other thing. All right. So now I've got my effort sprite. I already did the stuff I need to do on the infernal nail. I just, I didn't have to shrink it, but I did have to uh, take the tip down a little bit to, uh, so that it didn't extend above 64 tiles. And so this is 64 by 32 or 32 by 64. I don't know which one you do first. This way, this way? I don't know. I don't know. All right, so Primal Ifrit, Infernal Nail. Let's go replace things. All right, so now we still have this up from earlier. You have the sprite editor. And so I left the palette. So this is what I was saying. Each monster has its own palette. I left the palette for the original Katana Soul, and I changed to the um, hit on sprite. So that's why it looks all cheesy like this, because I'm replacing the hit on sprite, but I'm replacing the um, the palette for the katana soul. So image import, and it even gives you like a nice little preview there. And there it is. Got them in there. And I wish I could drag these corners out. It bugs me that on none of these um, hacking utilities can I resize any of the windows. It's been a problem for multiple computers. I don't think it's just me. I think it's just this. But anyway. So we've got him in here. And then the hit, hit a night. Hit a night. Hit a night. I don't know is what I'm going to replace for the Infernal Nail. And it can just stay on... It can stay on its... thing. Actually, um, one thing to keep in mind, actually... How did I get to Rama? Oh, I switched to Aspers. And this is something I meant to bring up, is that since there's each one, there's actually four different... Um, Hedonites, and so I actually need to fix the sprite on these other ones, and fix the formation when we get to replacing stuff in um, USME. And so the three, there's like, so there's one up there where um, Hedon is originally, and then there's like three down at the bottom. So I'm going to leave the three down at the bottom the same, but I do need to change their sprite because I'm going to be replacing them. And I was going to replace them with uh, one of the, the little cultist looking dudes. If I can find them. Why? Because it doesn't really matter. I don't think anyone's going to go fight Hedon with this boss hack. But man, I cannot find it. Oh, there. Right there. Hazer. And then I'll just... Um, I'll just tinker around with pallets until I find one that looks good. 518. All right. 518. So 7 and 518. 7... 518, and the last one, 7, 518. Okay, so now the other three, Hedonites, are fixed. I just need to fix, I can import over top of this one here. All right, so import, oh. Second there, it looked like it was didn't have enough colors. Doo, doo, doo. So I've been talking for a while. Why don't you guys say something? <laughs> How are you guys doing? 
How are you guys doing this week? Good? Bad? Ugly? I don't know. All right, and then we're going to get in safe. All right. All right, so now that we're that far, what was the next thing? <laughs> okay, I can vouch Super Kristen Things is not ugly. She's super hot, and I am not biased at all. There it is. Okay. There's some hex work to do. Um, and actually, I'm not going to jump right into that because I want you. I, I need to show you guys on USME what this stuff looks like. So let's go ahead and put our stuff in place here. Oh, we're going to expand this ROM too. Incidentally, we, yeah, no, we do need to. Yes, go ahead and get your ROM out, expand it. What's going on? Come on. There we go. Because we're going to also um, apply the monster battle script hack so we have more space for scripting. Because we're going to need that later. All right, these are all literally like one touch fixes, so I'm not really going to go through all that. But manage, you know, expand the ROM, manage expanded ROM, and hacking script stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and go into the monster editor. So you see the hit, the hit on knights here. They already have the new sprite and palette I put on them, and then. Ah. And then let's find let's find our other ones here. Uh, hit a knight. Okay, this is our infernal nail. Go ahead and rename this. And infernal nail does not fit, but infernal does. Infernail. And I'm not going to worry about the stats or anything. We're not going to hit that today. At least I don't think... If we have time, we'll get to it. But I don't think we're going to because we're not going to be getting to the actual fight. And hit on... Oh. Why is his palette messed up? Why is his palette messed up? I wonder if he shares part of his palette with that. Nope, never mind. It was just jacked up in the editor. Never mind. We're fine. We're fine. Rename. And we're going to call you P. Ifrit. Alright, I need a space. I can't remember which one's the actual space. Maybe it doesn't matter. But it bugs me when I don't know. Let's use that one. P ifrit. Primal ifrit. Wait, I can type the names? Because that's always bugged me. That I had to, like, type very... Ha! Huh. Look at that. When would that become a thing? Has that always been a thing? Has that always been a thing? Did you just teach me something about hacking, Kuga? I think you just taught me something about hacking.
All right. <laughs> Uh, what's up, HSAI guy? Yeah, I know, right? Oh, I can resize this window, but it doesn't actually do anything. I can resize the pointless window. Actually, can I resize these ones? Can I resize this one? No, I can't resize this one. Pain in the butt. All right. All right, so next we're going to hop into the formations. And this is um, where it gets interesting, for me anyway. So I already have it set up so that it comes right to the battle I want it to be on. And you see this little blue square here? This is the amount of space that the game recognizes for the sprite, for the monster. And so anything outside of that is going to basically get garbled into this or not show up at all. And if you set the presence for all of these here, you can see when I start moving them around, you can see how many the game thinks exist. Oops. And what's the other one there? Pink. Now watch. I'm doing something here on purpose. I'm, I'm organizing these in a specific way on purpose. And that's so that you can see the square here that it's making. So all of the molds here, they fit into... Um, this space. They fit into a 128 by 128 pixel space. And that's the most amount of space that we have to work with for any battle formation. So whether it's a boss that takes up literally the whole thing with just that one monster, or you have a bunch of little monsters that take up little portions of that, it all can only fit in 128 by 128 pixels. Okay, so if we go through... So what the molds are over here, they basically tell us how it's chopped up and they tell the game how to interpret that space, that 128 by 128 space. Okay, so when I switch to mold one here instead of zero, you see that it added, oops, a bunch of these here. Back these up just a little bit so we can see better. And so you can see these fit into roughly the same space. Now on this particular mo mold, there's actually enough space down here for... Um, there's another four 32 by 32 squares, but we've hit our max number of monsters. So it goes unused. It goes unutilized. But no matter what formation we have, it will always fit in 128 by 128 with some sort of rearranging. Okay? Now, unfortunately, there is no good setup that can fit primal for its sprite and more than two infernal nails. So in order to work with it, in order to do what I want to do, we have to edit the molds. We have to do, we have to make our own. And so that's where the fun stuff comes in. Okay. Oh, notepad plus plus, how I have missed you. All right. So this essentially represents um, that 128 by 128 square I kept talking about. And so it goes through. And so each one of these uh, bytes here, each one of these numbers, represents a 32 by 32 square. And... The data for all this stuff 
is found in the C2 disassembly. And we're not going to do any coding today. We're not doing coding, but what we are doing is we're going to edit the um, we're going to edit the tape the pointer tables and the data tables for mold nine. Okay, because mold nine, and you can see I've got present set for for all of these. So we should see any mold set it allows. Mold nine is just a ninety six by ninety six and nothing else. Well, we have other molds that have a 96 by 96. We have other molds that are 128 by 128. So there's really no need to have one that is literally set up just for a single 96 by 96 square. That's stupid. It's not useful. And I went ahead. Where did I write? Oh, uh, right here. So these formations right here are the only ones that use mold nine, and four of them are Tritach. And I did test it to make sure that it doesn't screw anything up. So what we actually need to do is we need to go back over these formation numbers. So 447 Tritach, and we're going to change it to seven. Okay, because that still that has the first one is also 96 by 96. Okay, 448. Mold 7, 487, okay, down to mold 7. So basically we're freeing up mold 9 so that we can edit it and do what we want with it. Although come to look at it, it probably would fit in that, um, in a 64 by 64 square. Maybe. Oh, score. Good job. Actually, it doesn't. Um, the mold does not show up. It is not recognized by uh, USME because USME hard codes what it thinks exists. I mean, you can still get the sprites to pop up, but it, it won't have the squares. That's really the only thing, and so you just have to know that it's going to work. You have to know what your mold is if you do that. All right. So from what I've been able to see, the easiest mold to replace is 9. And 506 is the last one, which is this guy. OK. And that's it. Save your ROM. And um, now mold 9 has nothing on it. OK, so I'm going to try to do this briefly because I know Um, I know me pouring over hex is not the most interesting thing for you guys, so I'm going to go over this briefly, and I did all the work for it already, um, and I'm going to make the edits again in here, but I'm just going to do it quickly. All right, so the way that the molds work is that there's two locations for them. And let's go up here to this here. And so these are the pointers per monster per mold. OK. And it's telling it where it's looking for its data for um, for how big it is. And I'm not entirely sure what the breakup is um, between this. There's, so there's two major portions of code. And I learned all of this today, so um, that's why I don't know exactly um, the difference between the two parts of the code is. I don't know if one's for loading or one's like a logical side and the other one is, um, is like on a bipixel side. I'm not sure. But there's two places that we need to edit. So the first one is is um, is in here. There's two major sections we need to edit. There's multiple little things we need to edit. Okay, and so they point to um, a bu a bunch of different sets of data 
for each monster to define how big its mold is or how big its uh, space, what it's allowed to work with. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and. Well, yeah. So we've got this to fix for mold nine. Um, this is a reference. This is not actually in the code. And then, and then it goes down each monster. Mold zero slot one, mold zero slot two, mold zero slot three. And we go down and we'll find mold nine. Mold nine slot zero. And it's the only one, it only has one monster in it. Um, my guess is Mold 9 was probably going to be for a specific boss at some point. That was because they make a note here that it, it was sized for 96 by 128, which is like a wide rectangle. There must have been a boss they were going to use it for at some point and then scrapped it. <clears throat> and so we're basically going to skip all of this and we're putting all of our stuff in a new location. Okay, so, so this is that first bit, the first, you know, wait, was that the first piece? No, this is that first piece we looked at. And then this is the actual data that corresponds to this here. Um, and so essentially what it is, uh, that's not what I want is the first byte, and it would be nice if I had this in the screen. I'm gonna to try to explain this as comprehensively as possible without taking too long. So if we think about this as our grid for that 128 by 128 pixels, each one of these is 32 by 32. So 32, 64, 96, 128, okay. 32, 64, 96, 128, okay? So that we can think of it as individual squares, nothing smaller than 32 by 32, okay? So when we have, so each monster, so mold zero slot zero and mold zero slot one both take place in the same mold and it's two different monsters, okay? So it's going to tell you what the offset is, um, on the x-axis, or what what the offset is horizontally, and then what the offset is vertically. Okay, those are the first two numbers. And they correspond to zero being the first slot, um, was it 40, 60, 80? Or 20, 40, 60? 20, 40, 60. So it'd be two zero if it's starting here, uh, four zero if it's starting here and six zero if it's starting here. Same thing this way. Zero zero. This would be um, zero or two zero four zero six zero. All right, and that's giving an offset in. Oh, is it pixels? Yeah, because twenty is thirty two. Twenty is thirty two in um in in hex. So yes, so this is an offset in pixels, how far over and down it is before the that particular monster starts. And then the next set of numbers is what they are, it was literally these numbers, which squares they take up. So an offset to where it starts, offset to where it starts, and then which squares it takes up. Because hypothetically, you could have you could have two monsters start in the same location and take up different amounts of squares. So I could have one that it that you know that starts here that takes up you know zero one two four five six, which is what we're going to do with Ifrit, by the way. Okay, and it's, so that's at three by two. But then I could have another one that starts in the same location takes up you know zero one four five eight nine, and it would be a tall rectangle, and that would be totally different which would changes the way that the um, data would get loaded into the game. 
Okay, so those are the things that we have to change. So we change the pointers. We change the data for all six monsters. And since there's not space here, I'm actually putting it somewhere else in the code. And I've already got that worked out. So we're going to go ahead and do that part. Um, that's the later portion. This is the early portion. Nope, that's the later portion too. I need this portion. All right. So let's open up. Let's open up our ROM. And we're going to go to the address uh, 2C710. Okay, and I'm not going to go over the, um, the offsets right now for the hex. I am going to do a beginner series, though, at some point in probably the next few weeks. And I will probably touch on things like headers and stuff like that. Um, so you guys understand some of the... Kind of, some, kind of some of the core stuff that we do. All right. Um, yes, I'm at the right address, and I'm just going to put in the new values. And these are basically pointers telling me where the monster um, data is, where the mold data is. Okay. So 6066, 6966, 6E66, 73. Six six eight six six seven D six six. Okay, so that's all six monsters. And so I'm putting it here six 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 zero six 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 nine six 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 E six six seven three. Okay. So those correspond to these locations correspond to where these are telling it to go. Okay, so 26860. All right, so starting here. Um, actually, I'm going to copy and paste. I can do that. All right, so that's half of the mold. That's half of the mold. Um, real quick, though. Real quick, though. Before I save all this stuff, well, let me do the other half of it first. Let me do the other half of it first, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the difference in what happens. Okay. Um, wait, did I put the last one in? Zero O B O F. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. So now the other portion to this is going to take place in another part of code. Uh, D O two C. D O two C. Okay. So these are to the um, monster formation size templates, which is, again, the molds. So I'm not sure which part does which thing, but this is another section of the code that also handles this. And again, we're going to be um, moving our mold nine. And where we're going to put it is basically in the next line down. So in 6690, and so the bytes get reversed, 9066 is the way we're going to put it in. And where is that located at? 2D22C. 9066. Okay. And then go to 2D6690. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, it's supposed to be 8 because of the thing. Is, are you guys following along with this at all? I, I know I'm kind of rushing through it, but this is a little bit convoluted. 
That was just why I tried to explain so much when I was still in um, in FF3 USME. Like, seriously. Does this make sense to you guys? In any way, shape, or fashion? Alright, and that's the next last part. Good. <coughs> now the last section here is um, it's actually a bit convoluted, and it took um, it took me having to work out patterns to figure it out. It doesn't just like fall into place, and it does make sense, but again, it's hard to it's hard to explain. And they try to do it actually in the disassembly. So props to Assassin, or whoever was the one who did this particular part of the disassembly. Um, basically, the first two bytes are um, an offset based on a RAM address. And that's the part that took me forever to figure out. And then bytes um, two and three, or the third and fourth bytes, really, is what they are. Um, are basically telling, like, just dimensions. They're just dimensions. What is the size? Okay, so, um, so 08 stands for 64. 08, 64. Okay, that's why this, that's why this one is 64 by 64. And you can see that 32 by 32 is 0404, exactly half of that. Okay, so when you have something like 64 by 128, you have um, you have 08, or was it 0, 08 and 10, which is double in in hex. 10 is double of 08. Um, because 10 equates to 16 in decimal, and 8 is still 8, and 16 is double of 8. Okay. All right, so these last two, the last two bytes here in each of these templates for each monster. Okay, there's the same number of these as there are callable monsters in the formation in the mold. Is just the size. This other one, um, I just went ahead and made a table. So that table tells us what it is, and these are other the other molds that they're called in when I was testing it out, and I filled in the gaps with logic. Although all the ones we're doing actually have a representation in here. And that's really as far as I'm going to go on that. There's really no reason for me to pick that apart. But essentially, these are the ones for our new mold. And um, so our new mold, and I should have made a graphic for this, because that would have made sense. That would have made sense. Do I still have GIMP up? Incidentally, this will probably be easier in MS Paint. MS Pain. MS Pain. Whoa. So the mold that we're creating. Go away. Oh no. Why does Firefox keep crashing while I'm streaming? I think I still have you guys because OBS didn't crash. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I still have you guys. Well, this has been fun. Okay, it's opening back everything back up. Do to do. All right, shapes. I can't see if you guys are typing anything, so sorry. Until it gets back up. So in our giant 128 by 128, this is what we're doing. Ugh, no, never Internet Explorer. It's the worst. All right, so what we are going to be using, so this basically represents IFRIT, and this is a, an approximation here. IFRIT is that 96 by 64. And then we're going to have we define it. We're going to defining five that's it. Uh, 
Damn it. Yeah, this is really rough, but uh gets the point across. So with our with our 128 by 128, we're splitting it into six monsters. One that's 64 or I'm sorry, 64 by 96. I keep getting those backwards. I think I'm supposed to say horizontal first. 96 by 64. And then all the rest of these are 32 by 64. 32 by 64. 32 by 64. All right, so that gives us primal ifrit and up to five nails, infernal nails, if we want. MSP, yeah. It's true. It's true. All right, so all the work that we're doing that I just did in the hex is basically setting up a mold that looks like this. And then we can take each of those rectangles individually to work with. Um, and I still need to finish actually doing the changes for that last one. But, and again, I'm just going to copy paste. Okay, and that's it. That's it. That's that's it for the the mold. The hard part is done. The hex is done. You survived. You survived. Okay. All right. So now that that's done, before I save this, before I save this in the ROM, what I want to do is I want to close that. Uh, you know what? I can't do that. Actually, I think I am going to have to just save it. Because if I change anything in um, FF3 USME, it's going to change the hex in here, and that'll screw it up. So I'm just going to save it. I was going to show you what it looked like if I didn't do it right. If I didn't change the mold. And it is a garbled, awful mess. Yeah, Odal. I, I I will do a hex. I will do a hex tutorial. Um, uh, Mad Seer from ff6hacking.com does have a couple things up. Um, I think the stuff he's got posted currently is event editing, but we do have um, there are a couple hex tutorials on the site. But I am going to do something on stream about learning hex it's really actually not that it's it's very daunting before you get started but once you actually like get in and get your hands dirty it's really not that bad it's really not that bad especially when um you realize that the default windows calculator comes with a programmer mode that translates everything for you it's really really easy wallow hex Do uh, it didn't get bigger that way. All right. All right. So our mold is done. Our sprite is uploaded. Monster Master Z Monster AI patch was detected in order to edit. What are you talking about? What are you even doing? Oh, was that the um, expanded thing? I did do that. I'm going to reapply that patch. Huh. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Out of memory. Available bytes is all of them. I have all of them. All right, well, I'm going to have to um, figure out what's going on with this. But in the meantime, we're going to hop over in the formation here. 
we're going to go back to our primal ifrit. And he's on mold 9. And I think I'm going to put four infernal nails in there. And I'll move him around a little bit. What in the world? This got blowed up. Something happened. Something got messed up. All right, hold on. Something got messed up. I do have a backup. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use my backup from all this from the first time around. I went and did this. All right. Um, let's. Rename this broken. I do need to figure out what that is, so I'm not going to just let it go, but I'm going to do that off screen. All right. Yeah, see, this one's not screwed up. This is the one I did earlier today. Maybe when I was, maybe when I was doing the hex, maybe I was rushing. I know, right? I, I seem to get Kuga's curse every time, every time you're on the stream. Uh, okay. All right, 465. And as you can see, I actually already put some stuff in here. I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to move the rest of these around a little bit. All right, how far up? 15 is the highest I can go. I'm going to move that one, which is down there. It's a pretty decent spread. Move all these up like one. There we go. I think that's a pretty good looking spread. All right, so before all of this would have ended up garbled because it only would have recognized um, the primal ifrit sprite and all the rest of these would have just not worked. And if I had loaded a different mold, and that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Let's load. Does that take up the right space? Just for fun, let's try it. Let's start with seven and see what it does. This one may not be too as garbled as uh, some of the other ones get, but um, but for fun. Let's look at this. Okay. Let's go ahead and run this. And I do have my... Yes, I did put my save state in here, too. I have to go up to the side because I accidentally created an uh, event square there, but didn't put anything in it. So the game freezes when I stand there. Look, now I can't do anything. So... So when I use Mold 7, okay, well everything's just cut off, which is actually pretty, relatively minor. Relatively minor. Oh, whoops, that's not what I want to do. I'm going to go back in here and put the right mold on. I want to try to find another broken mold, hold on. One that doesn't, like, recognize one of those or overwrites... Hi, EP. Where are you coming from? Do I know you from somewhere? Or are you just, uh, or did you find us through Twitch? What's going to look interesting? It's going to look weird. Actually, let's see what happens when I load mold 6, because that'll actually probably do a bit. Also, I think I'm halfway off the screen here. Not halfway, but enough that it would bug me. Okay, so yeah, so you see how, um, see how the space for the sprite, and you keep seeing little flashes down here at the bottom. 
okay? That's because the only thing that it thinks it recognizes is that one tw is a whole 128 by um, 128. Now, I'm actually curious because of the um, the other sprites that are showing up up there, even though it's not supposed to recognize them. Um, oh, actually, I do know why that is. Because when it's going down the data, this only had space for one um, for one sprite. And so you remember how there was only like one line in there? Well, the game doesn't know that that's the end of the number of monsters, so it just goes down to the next one. So it just goes down to the next one. So what it's doing is it's cutting into the next mold for those other monsters, for you know, for those other monsters, and that's what those molds happen to look like. Um, and then the ones out here that are un you know colorized very very badly, those are the ones um, that got loaded in to the 128 by 128. But they're with Ifrit's palette because that's because Ifrit is saying, "Hey, I'm putting this whole 128 by 128 square in here." Okay, so that's why it looks like this. If you ever see, um, if you ever load up a boss fight that you're working on, or a monster, or if you're doing your hack, and something like this happens. It's because of the molds. That's why. That's why this stuff happens. Okay. All right. So now. Now I'll go ahead and I'll fix it. All right, so now I'm gonna to go to our new mold that we just made. And actually real quick, while I'm here, um, what am I doing? I'm actually gonna load the, um, the one that we made, the Ifrit Sprite we made this time because that one's actually better. Um, that one there. So image, import. Okay. Um, bing, bing. Uh, that and then that. Uh, folders and folders and folders. Folders and folders and folders. All right. So let's let's see if I did this right. Oh wait, this is the this is not the one I just did, but yeah. But you can see it's all here and it all works. Okay. All right. That's most of what I had planned out for this evening. So what we're going to be looking at for the actual fight, let's talk about that for a minute, while I let Ifrit sit here and pound on me with, um, with Katana Soul's attacks. Um, so what I'm looking at here is that uh, the Infernal Nails are not going to start in the fight, it's just going to be Ifrit for the Phase 1. And then um, at a certain point, He's going to summon a certain number of nails. I'm not sure. I think I'm going to start with like two. And the idea is you have to um, kill the nails before you continue the fight. If you don't beat the nails, then he's going to come down and he's going to he's going to wipe the party basically. Now I may tweak that so that it's not that drastic. Maybe it'll just be like a really really heavy hit instead of um, instead of like an instant wipe. Since I'm trying to make this easier than Titan Extreme. <laughs> but it's also not going to be that hard to kill the Infernal Nails. Um, and then as the fight goes on, as he progresses through his phases, when he spawns the nails, um, there's going to be more of them. So that maybe I'll just like do two, three, four, or maybe I'll do it for random amounts each time. I don't know. I don't know. But the idea is that... Um, you have to kill the nails, otherwise he's going to wipe the party. And then, uh... And then we've got a couple other mechanics to work with. Um... What I'd like to do is have him, uh... Basically attack the front row with uh, an ability that's going to push them back and then go into, like, a flurry of attacks. So, having someone in the front row, you don't want the entire party in the front row, 
because then you're taking a lot of damage. Um, but then you can do 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 do. do. All right, so you don't want the entire party in the front row because then you're gonna end up taking a lot of damage. So the person you're gonna stick in the front row, you're gonna want to be pretty tanky <coughs> because they're gonna take the brunt of the attack. If you put everyone in the front row, then you're taking a lot of damage. And if you put everybody in the back row, um, then he'll hit the back row. If there's not someone in the front row, he'll hit the back row. And then um, he'll be hitting the back row into the front row because I'm gonna use the reverse polarity mechanic to just basically change your position, whether front row or back row. So that means if he hits the back row, he's pushing him all to the front row, and then he's going to a flurry of physical attacks, which are going to do a lot more damage in the front row than they would in the back row. So the idea is, hits the front row into the back row, or the, the, the what you're trying to do, what you would like to do, is put one person in the front row um, to tank that attack. And then, uh, so those are, those are the two primary mechanics that I've come up with so far. Um, I need to go back over what his fight actually looks like from Final Fantasy XIV, because I haven't played it in, like, two years. I played it for, like, the first six months it was out, and in the, um, and in the closed beta. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Well, at all, you can, uh, you can definitely... What world are you using? Oh, maybe. And life too. Alright. Yeah, so if you check out our site, I don't know, I don't know if you're on the site, I don't know if, um... I, I don't know if I've seen you on the site or not, I have actually a really bad memory. So, if you have, forgive me. But yeah, check out our site, um, ff6hacking.com. There's actually a link down in my panels on this page right here, Twitch, that will take you there. Um, and that's a great place to learn. We've got uh, a ton of documents and utilities and a lot of really helpful people. So definitely, definitely check it out. Always unregisters itself. <laughs> Not sure that's a thing. Not sure that's a thing. All right, well let's um, let's kill this dude. But yeah. Also, I'm going to be um, I'm going to be adding. So during the nail phases, during the nail phases, I'm going to add a. Um, a pretty heavy counter to Primal Ifrit to discourage um, to discourage this. <laughs> so you can't just nuke the whole thing. I'm going to make you take them out single target. Which adds pressure to the whole thing and makes the number of nails that are on the screen significant. Ah, okay. Not dead yet. I used two ultimas on you. You don't have anything good. Why did I put this on you? That's right. He'll die soon enough. He's almost dead. Because apparently the max HP is 65,000. There we go. Yep, so I'm going to do a few music changes, um, and I'm going to do one, uh, one background change, which would be pretty significant. You could probably guess which one it's going to be, <laughs> if you knew the list. And I'll find some text to make it dramatic and some cool stuff, and uh, from there it's all about flavor, which is really fun. Alright, so next time, next time we're going to, um, we're going to do the last little bit of pre-work before we actually get into the coding of the uh, script and that's going to be to add a little event here this uh, this event here that currently freezes me because I didn't put anything in there basically I'm gonna put a tile here 
in here and the one in front of it that's basically just going to be like light the screen of red and a warning about it being super hot. I don't know. I don't know. Just something to acknowledge before you go into the fight that touching that thing is a big deal. And then that's it. We'll be ready to, to jump in. All right. And then the fun stuff. Oh, sweet. So my game facts post did get somebody. Yeah, I, I was a little bit rushed when I was posting that, and I left out a bunch of details. I started at 9.30, and so it's 9.30 every Thursday. <laughs> nine, or 9, I'm sorry, 9.30 Eastern Time. I don't know what that is for you. But 9.30 Eastern Time every Thursday. Um, <coughs> there is, if you, if you, uh, if you favorite this page or follow, uh, follow me on here, down in my panels, there's a link to, um, a weekly countdown that takes you to it every single, um, every single week. It just automatically refreshes. So you can, you can check that down in my panels. <coughs> and yeah, I'll be here, I'll be here every week. Uh, this was our first day on, on Ifrit, and we're going to keep working on that next week. And in two weeks, um, I'm actually going to be playing someone else's hack and doing um, doing a question and answer. going to do a question and answer uh, about hacking in general, if anyone has any questions for their own personal projects or anything like that, stuff I can help with. Um, I'll be working on that stuff. Then that's in two weeks. All right, so next week is Ifrit. Week after that is Q&A. Uh, I want to try to get a calendar set up, and either I'll link that here or I'll find a way to embed it on the site. Um, and I'm going to work out basically, you know, once a week or once a month I want to do a Q&A. Once a month I want to do um, maybe a beginner series night, and then the rest of the nights will be spent, um, like, on our given topic for what we're working on at the time. <laughs> so yeah, uh, currently I'm not playing anyone's hack, but oh, for the for the one in um, two weeks, the recommendation is to play Kuga's is to do some playtesting on Kuga's uh, um, crossover crisis, which I don't know very much about, but I have actually seen a bunch of the sprite work, so it looks cute. I think it'll be cool. Um, I don't know what else has been changed about it. I do like the fact that he's got a big map edit on it. Um, I think that stuff's really cool, and that's something that I haven't really done a whole lot with. Um, so, <laughs> so I'll just be tinkering around with that. It's it's the 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 part where I'm playing a hack is really just uh, a filler while I'm waiting for questions because I can't come into a Q and A like knowing I'm gonna get a bunch of questions. So um, <laughs> basically, the the the, the ha playing a hack is for the background stuff, and the reason I'm doing a hack is because this is a hacking stream that we're doing <laughs> so yeah although although um i have definitely considered doing brave new world and um i'm sure i would have a lot to say about that because i know you guys did a lot of work on the back end and so <laughs> there would be actual things to comment about and i don't know what that is nothing against kuga i don't know what his back end looks like <laughs> i don't know what all the stuff he's done um outside of the stuff. Like I said, I don't really know anything about it. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I recognize you. As soon as um, as soon as as soon as uh, Gein attack said BTB, I know who BTB is. <coughs> I was around when you released uh, Brave New World, so so yeah. But I never played it. I actually never played a lot of them. I I, I got like half an hour into uh, one of the betas for um. Rot DS. That's what I call it. <laughs> Return of the Dark Sorcerer. Dark Sorcerer. And I never played any of the official ones. I never I never played any of them, which is really weird considering how much hacking I do. I spend more time hacking than actually playing any of it, so So it'll be new for me. Alright guys, that's that's uh that's everything for tonight. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. Yeah, uh, I hope that you guys come back around. We're going to be doing more of this next week, and we'll get into the actual uh, actual boss fight. I'll do some planning out. I will be having a topic up on the forum for input. You know, the stuff that I do, almost nothing that I do is going to be set in stone. 
and I like getting input. So, um, so please interact with me on the site. Even if you don't think you're going to make it to the stream or whatever else, interact on the site. Like, I want to get this community working. <coughs> you know, we have we we have a lot of people on the site. We don't have a ton of like really active people, or people are only active in this area or this area or this area. So I, I what I want to do is I want to get people just talking, just talking about stuff. Okay, even if you don't think the stuff you have to say is really that important, throw it against the wall, see what sticks. You know? <coughs> Alright, well, um, I will catch you guys next week, and uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Alright, happy hacking.